Hello again everybody and welcome to another edition of On the Range and I'm in the A10C Warthog again today to look at a topic you don't really see that often. You see a lot of aircraft startups on YouTube videos but hardly ever see an aircraft shut down so that's what I'm going to do today. I'll bring up the checklist and I'm using a checklist prepared by the 476th Virtual Fighter Group and I'll have a link in the video description to the checklist and instructions for getting it on your kneeboard if you would like to do that as well. But let's start with the after clearing the active runway procedure and this can be done at any point but before you get to the preferably the arm d arm location so anti-skid off i'm going to disable the anti-skid function of the braking system and throughout this entire procedure i'm going to get these master cautions and just to help me out here for the purposes of this video i'm going to disable the master caution system so that we don't have to hear those every time but they are a very normal part of the shutdown procedure now, ejection seat, ground safety lever to safe. Now, I'm just going to reach down here and flip the handle up to the upright position. That's going to safe the seat and keep me from inadvertently ejecting myself by pull the handles. Canopy as desired. So, let's go ahead and open up the canopy. This is typically what would be done unless it's very, very cold out or uh, very, very windy out. Okay, so canopy and CCTVS and DVADR remote control panel off. So, I'm going to come over here to the left side and this panel is going to go to the off position and this system is what if you ever see like the HUD footage or a footage of a Maverick firing or you know, targeting pod footage this is what controls the recording system and allows that footage to be captured but turn it off since we're clear of the runway okay tech in ILS equipment off and that's over here on the right panel so tech in is off and ILS is off and IFFCC bit vault display and record. So for this, I'm going to put the IFFCC switch to the test position. And on my HUD, I get some additional controls. I want to come to the second line, which is the bit line. Press enter. And then second from the bottom, I have bit vault display. So I select on down to there, hit enter. And you can see bit vaults for those built-in test results, which are run periodically throughout the flight. I have all zeros, so that means that I just have no faults. If I did, I would record them like it says so I'll just put that back to on throughout the remainder of the taxi now MFCD status page check and record MFLs and this is a similar step to the one we just performed we just select the status page and at the bottom we have the maintenance fault log and we can see that the maintenance fault log is empty and if we did have some problems with the systems we would have some indications there but we have nothing so we press on to HUD day night filter today. So this is controlled by a switch over here and we have a day and a night setting. You can see if I put it to the night setting, then I get the amber color on the HUD, put it back to the day setting, I'm back to green. And I just want to make sure that's in the day position because it's a physical filter that just sort of flips into place. And if I leave it extended during the day, the direct sunlight can damage the filter. Okay, so that's stowed. Landing and taxi lights is required. So I can go ahead and just enable taxi lights since I am clear of the runway and CMSP mode switch to standby system switches off and CMSP off. So that's all down here on our counter ratio controls. I want to go to the standby position on the dial, go to off on all four portions of the system and then put the dial to the off position. So now my countermeasures are shut off. Windshield, defog, and DI switch. I'm going to come over to the right side. It's on my ECS panel. And I'm going to just verify at this point that this is off. If it were on, it has the capability to provide air off of the engine compressor that blows over the front windshield. Sort of like or exactly like the defrost function in your vehicle. So for now, that's going to remain off. And then pitot heat. That switch goes to the off position. And that's going to remove the heating from the pitot tube that we see out there on the right wing and keep it from overheating since it doesn't have airflow over it now that we have landed to cool it off. Okay, next page, let's go to position lights flash, anti-collision lights off. So that's over here on our lighting panel. I just want to go to the flash position for position lights off on anti-collision light. As I overshot the turn there, okay, now anti-collision lights got that flaps full up and at this point that's just verify flaps are full up. Now, after you actually perform this procedure, you would pull into a D-arm area where a crew chief would marshal you in, establish communications, and just talk a little bit about the status of the aircraft with him or her, and you would also inform the crew chief whether or not you have fired the gun. 
The weapons crew would then come in and safe the weapons and safe the gun if needed. And you would head on to the parking location where we're going to get into the engine shutdown procedure. So let me press on and get ready to pull into chalks here. Okay, so we're pulling into one of the live load areas here at Creech, and that's where I'm going to go through the engine shutdown. So again, I would be picked up by a marshaller. We'll just say this is my spot. The marshaller is going to guide me in. I just follow the directions and pull up until I'm just almost to the final nose wheel tire position. The crew chief is going to stop me right there and then go under the aircraft to check the status of the brakes and check the status of the tires and then come out, marshal me forward for a rollover check just to check the part of the tire that was contacting the ground before. At that point, chocks are installed and we run through the engine shutdown. So brakes hold until chocks are installed. And unfortunately in the A-10 we don't have the shock function. So I'm just going to have to hold the brakes throughout this entire procedure here. Now standby ADI or standby attitude indicator cage. And what I want to do is left click the knob and then rotate it with my mouse wheel. And that's going to cage it up and you can see the off flag. Armament hub control panel set master arm, gun pack, and laser armament switch to safe and turn the targeting pod off. So at this point, I'm just verifying safe, 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 and off on the targeting pod. So that's done. Altitude source as desired. I have a three position switch for barrow, delta, and radar. I just leave this in whatever position I want to leave it in. I'll do a tutorial on the function of this switch. It's actually kind of neat uh, in a later video. But we go to HUD mode switch as desired, and we have a normal and standby position. If I had it in the standby position, you can see the standby manual aiming pipper up there. But I'm just going to leave it in the normal position and go to CICU, JTRS, and IFFCC switch off. And those are right here, CICU, JTRS, IFFCC, all three off. And that just removes power from some of the aircraft's avionics. MFCD, those are the displays. I go off and off on both of the displays. Tizzle. Now this is associated with the paid penny pod that you can probably see on the uh, forward right portion of the fuselage. I just verify that the master switch is in the off position. It is. And I missed two. Okay, I've got to go to the AAP. So EGI, EGI, that's the navigation system, and CDU, that's the display. I want to go off and off. So that's going to shut down that system and the display and some of the avionics that control it. And then seat full up, so I just come to this switch, go up on the switch, and you can see that it's actually raising the seat. And this is just to make maintenance, uh, routine checks on the seat a lot easier for folks to perform. And if something is dropped in the cockpit, which is a well, pretty common occurrence, it's a lot easier to reach underneath the seat and recover whatever it was if the seat is in the up position. And if you have something loose in the cockpit, you really don't want to be raising or lowering the seat for fear of snagging whatever it is. But... Okay, seat full up, and then left throttle off after 5 minutes at idle, and the taxi time may be included if the core RPM does not exceed 80%. So I think we meet that criteria here. We've been at idle for a while. Now, one additional note here is that I don't want to shut down the left engine if the APU is running, because the APU exhaust is right there in close proximity to the engine, so as the left engine shuts down, it's possible for fuel with drains to ignite under certain circumstances. So I verify APU off. Then I'm just going to pull the left throttle to the shutoff or cutoff position and hold it against the stop until my temperature is below 200, which we can see it's down to, coming down through 140 now, and my RPMs are below 5%. That's going to be a final confirmation that the engine is actually off. And then I'm going to watch my left system hydraulic pressure. I want to, once the system has bled off so there's no longer any hydraulic pressure, do a flight control check, and that's the next step. Flight control check after left hydraulic pressure bleed off. So we have a little ways to go here, and I'm going to help it along by just sort of using some of the systems here that are going to start to bleed off the pressure. So yeah, for our purposes, we'll call that good. I'll just do a quick flight control check for freedom of movement and correct movement of all flight control surfaces that are supposed to be working without left hydraulic pressure, and we'll call that good. Now, one other note here on the shutdown is that you see that the temperature was down to like 140 or so and it's come back up to a little bit over 400 just due to heat soak back due to not having the airflow and other fluid movements associated with the engine to cool it off so you just want to make sure that that engine heat soak back doesn't get above 520 
If it does, then you could always motor the engine using this switch right here, using bleed air off of the right engine to cool that engine down. So we're looking good. So that means that we can go to the right throttle off. And same thing, we just pull it to the cutoff position, hold it against the stop until the temperature is below 200 and the RPMs are below 5%. Just monitoring that temperature, making sure that the soak back doesn't get above 520. Now, if the temperature in this case gets above 520, then we would have to fire up the APU to get some bleed air to motor the engine. But I think we're going to be okay here, and I'll press on to inverter and battery off. So right now, without those engines running, we don't have anything providing power to the aircraft other than the battery and the inverter. So let's go inverter off, battery off and communications equipment off, so all three radios. This is one of those things where I probably would have got this before even landing in a couple of cases if I don't need the radios, but they are off. Oxygen supply lever is going to the off position and deploy the boarding ladder. So I raise the cover, press the button, and you'll be able to see the ladder come down. So there you have it. That's the entire shutdown from beginning to end in accordance with the checklist at least. And just as a reminder there, I did disable the master caution system. So any master cautions that you get throughout the shutdown procedure, and it's pretty much constant throughout, are perfectly normal. So that's going to do it for this edition. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.